What is going on guys? I know it's been a while, but this is Gene Jensen and I want to talk about the baits that I'll be throwing in the month of November. All right, November in the south. And I'm going to talk about November up north a little bit, except where the ice is, because I don't do that hard water stuff. And I also want to talk about uh, the lures and the, and the baits that I'll use in, in, uh, in lakes that have grass and in lakes that don't have grass. Because there's a difference. There's a big difference, especially along the Tennessee River and, you know, places that have hydrilla and stuff like that. But anyway... Um, it's November. It's fall here in the south. As you can see by the trees behind me, it's beautiful. The weather's great. It's hoodie weather, and that means the bass are super, super shallow. Um, so I'm going to be throwing baits that are shallow. This is the time of the year where I suggest if you want to bank fish and be successful, get out there and do some bank fishing. Um, if you want to, if you want to just tear up a lot of fish in a short amount of time, this is when they're feeding up for the winter time. Their 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 metabolism is still high water temperature is low right now we're in the mid to low 60s and they are chasing and eating bait fish so let's start there all right so bait fish um one of the that's one of the things i really don't worry about matching the 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 type of bait fish exactly because most of the baits that i'm going to be throwing in the fall are going to be reaction reaction style baits or moving baits um if i'm on a a, a small pond and stuff i'll throw blue, bluegill type type baits and if I'm on a bigger lake, I'm going to throw shad patterns or minnow patterns, and you know, whites and silvers and things like that. So let's, keeping that in mind, let's talk about the baits that I would use for a, a grassless lake. All right, so the first bait that I'm going to pull out in a lake that has no grass is going to be a square bill crankbait. Square bill crankbaits are... I love them because you can rip them, you can take them and run them through cover, you can bang them off of trees, you can bring them off of rocks, and you can cover a lot of water. And so, number one, we'll pull out a couple of them. It's got the hook stuck together, but I don't think it really matters. This is a Spro Little John. Uh, it's in a muddy water color. So, you know, a lot of times you get really good stained water this time of the year from rain and things like that. So a good muddy water color or um, a shad color. Here's a little six inch square bill. You know, a little shad color like this. And I'm going to leave a link to, in the description to all of these baits that I show and then some that I suggest down in the description. They're Tackle Warehouse links. Uh, if you buy it on Tackle Warehouse, I get a little bit of a cut. Uh, it helps out the channel quite a bit. So appreciate it if you do that. And then last but not least is going to be a Jabberjaw. Okay, sponsored bait, but I love them because they sound like a chatterbait but they look like a square bill and they run through stuff like a square bill and a chatterbait doesn't come through trees very easy but this one comes through really really good um and so those are a good three uh but all square bills are really good throw them into cover throw them on a medium moderate action rod 12 15 pound test fluorocarbon line and bang them off of cover and bang them off of structure and and uh and you'll get these reaction strikes that are absolutely amazing set the hook and bring them in it's a lot of fun um gear ratio i like a seven three to one gear ratio reel um and yeah that's it uh just like i said it's the first thing i'm gonna grab all right so number two number two is a spinner bait another same no, same reason as the square bill you got the blades that look like a little small bait. A lot of the shad this time of the year is really small and stuff like that. I like a good compact one like this uh, SOB uh, Mini Me Spinner Bait. It's probably one of my favorites. Um, I like them in shad colors, a little bit of chartreuse, but um, I really do want them to, to be smaller. And so I'm not going to get those full size big, chat, big spinner baits. And uh, also a trailer hook is a must. I've got one on here. Let me see if I can get the skirt out of the way and show you guys. So that's what the spinner bait looks like when it's got a little trailer hook on the back end. Just in case you get you get these short strikes. It does get hung up in the trees a little bit more because of that trailer hook. But it catches fish. It really does. Um, I'm gonna throw it on the same rod I'm gonna throw a square bill on. Medium, moderate action rod, sometimes a medium heavy if it's a bigger spinner bait. But a medium moderate action, 12, 15 pound line, seven, three to one gear ratio reel. Um and just same thing, chunk it around cover, cover a lot of water, keep it shallow. A lot of times this time of the year, it, the bass are so shallow, if your trolling motor's not kicking up mud, you're fishing too deep. 
um, and you just go to the backs of the creeks where the bait fish are or go into the pockets where the bait fish are find the bait and start fishing and you'll catch bass now the next one if you're in a, a lake that has a lot of thick cover a lot of brush and a lot of logs and trees and things like that you know you're going to get hung up um, with a square bill and with a with a spinner bait a little bit and if it's frustrating to you switch over to a swim jig this is a six cent swim jig um, i use these i use um i use greenfish tackle swim jig is my favorite one i typically have a bunch of those and um you know 20 pound test fluorocarbon line medium heavy 7.3 medium heavy rod 8 3 to 1 gear ratio reel or 7 7 3 to 1 is okay too and just throw it into cover and reel it through and shake it and jig it and do all kinds of crazy stuff just act like it's a minnow coming through the cover banging it off of stuff really hard to get this thing hung up and it's really good in both wood and in grass and so if you've got scattered grass you do the same thing throw it out and rip it through the grass and get those reaction strikes and when you find the bass they're going to be all in the same area and you can just absolutely wear them out with a, a swim jig now the trailer on this one is a um what is it it's a strike king um menace and i've taken and i've cut and i'll leave a link to the videos and stuff on how to fish these baits but i, I talk about this specifically in my swim jig video but i i cut one of the the uh the claws off or one of the tails off so it's just one tail on the bottom and it looks like a little small compact minnow is basically the re what i'm trying to mimic really really good trailer but that's amazing i mean I, I love a swim jig all year long and if you guys remember three years ago i could not stand a swim jig so i had to teach myself how to love it all right grass lakes i'm talking chickamauga gunnersville um tennessee river up north anywhere you've got a lot of hydrilla the grass mats out um in the shallow water and and the bass get congregated in there and so does the, so does the bait fish that is my favorite thing to fish and so let's talk about those style of baits all right so the first one i want to talk about is a is a new bait on the market uh just came out a few weeks ago actually about a month and a half maybe two months ago um but i wore them out in louisiana throwing this thing and it was mainly for a search bait and i used it at working these giant grass mats trying to find out where these bass were located they weren't particularly hitting it and eating it but they were blowing up on it i could get them to at least lo tell me where they were and then i would throw a texas rig flipping bait into the hole and catch them but um and i did catch a few on it but the, the bass just weren't in the mood to hit it but this was the the new flapping frog from spro and when they showed me this at iCast, I got pretty excited because it is a very, very durable plastic, really soft, really easy to get a hook set when they get it good and when, you know, when they actually get it in their mouth. Um, and it is, um, it's a spro frog. And so you got a good, good gamagatsu hook um, and, and it's just, it's built like a tank and yet it's really easy to collapse and, and, and you're not going to miss a lot of fish on this one. And so flapping frog is one of them i'm going to throw this on a frog rod not my little short one but a, a seven foot five heavy this is the uh the 13 fishing it's the old fate black frog rod they still make the rod or the uh still make the the the, the rod that has that action and power they just don't call it a frog rod anymore i don't think they might i don't know um but anyway 65 50 to 65 pound brett test braid um and uh eight eight one to one gear ratio reel or this might be an eight five to one uh eight three to one eight three to one gear ratio reel and you just throw it out and buzz it back in and those little legs kick and they, it's just a locating bait it's a, it's a good alternative to a buzz bait the next frog is my bread and butter the one i like to use the most and i'm pretty particular about or pretty uh biased because i had a lot of input into this frog and uh this is the uh the 13 fishing trash panda uh which one i'm going to throw in mats big thick nasty mats uh, this thing, when when I say I had a lot to do with it, I, I like a, uh, a frog that has a hook that's not going to flex out. If the if you only get one hook in the fish, a lot of times most frogs will, or most hooks will flex out. Well, this one has uh, shrink wrap around those hooks to pre prevent them from flexing out. It also plugs the hole to keep water from getting in. It's got a good uh, a good vent, real easy to collapse that kind of stuff. I'm going to throw it on the same. If I'm in mats, I like those long seven foot five rods, seven foot four, heavy, 65 pound braid, eight three to one gear ratio reel. Same thing I'm gonna throw the other one on. You just need that long rod with that leverage to get the fish out. 
and you need to set the hook hard. It is a whole lot of fun. Now, you're not gonna walk this frog through matted vegetation. It's not gonna happen. I just drag and stop and drag and stop. And I'll leave a video on how to do that right up here. But those are <laughs> that and the Spro Frog and it, you, you, you can have a really, really, really good day. Now, say they're not hitting top water, which was my issue in Louisiana. They would blow up on that flapping frog, but they would not commit to it. So I'm, gonna, I'm always going to have a, a flipping bait, okay? Almost a punch style bait. This is a, a three quarter ounce weight. The heaviest I like to go when I'm actually punching is a one and a quarter ounce to get through that thick matted vegetation. But if it's not matted up, I'm gonna throw no heavier than an ounce. The smaller the bait, the, the smaller the weight, the easier it is or the more hook sets that you get, the more positive hook sets. The bigger the weight, the more blows that fish's mouth open and you just don't get the hook set very good. So keep that in mind. Go with the lightest you can get away with. So it was pretty thick cover in Louisiana. And I'm gonna show you this up close. Three, pretty thick cover, so I used that three quarter ounce weight, pegged it, 65 pound test uh, cigar uh, um, smackdown. This is the, uh, the G Finesse, the Gamagatsu G Finesse heavy cover flipping hook. And I'll, I'll leave a link down in the description. And the Invader. And the reason I love an Invader is look how skinny that is. And, and most of my sinkers, my big sinkers, slide right over the head, make a nice good sleep profile, punches through vegetation. I can get, get by with a lighter weight in thick vegetation because there's nothing for to grab hold of the grass as it punches through that hole. Slides right through and in, in the soft plastic or the plastic is, is stiffer and more durable than a lot of the other baits that I like to throw. So I'll punch with this one all day long and it lasts a lot of fish, it lasts a lot of punches. You know, you're really beating the mess out of your soft plastic when you're punching grass. So a long, long heavy rod. This is a seven foot four heavy. Um, and when I need accurate pitches and stuff like that, I use that when I'm punching, I use a 7-Eleven heavy uh, because I need that uh, leverage to turn a big fish instantly and get him up out of that stuff before he gets hung up. But anyway, good heavy line, good punching, good follow-up bait for blow-ups when you're fishing a frog. You know, you, you're working the frog along the, the, along the mats and they blow up and you miss them and you immediately drop your rod or reel your bait in, drop your rod, throw uh, your uh, your Texas rig into that hole. You already know where the fish is. You're gonna catch them. I promise All right, so last but not least and I know I've got one tied on because I've been fishing it today Is one we tend to forget okay, so I always talk about a chatterbait because a chatterbait works almost all year long And it's my favorite bait, but in the fall There is something about a lipless crankbait, okay? This is a, a Bill Lewis rattle trap, the OG of all lipless crankbaits. Um, this is another one of my favorites. This is a, an Aruku Shad, a Spro Aruku Shad. I like this one because I can burn it and it doesn't roll on its side. This one will roll up. So depending on how fast I want to I want to fish is what type of a lipless that I'm throwing or the sound. You can, you can hear them. This one has different sounds make a difference sometimes. I've got some really good lipless crankbait videos, but um, I usually upsize the hook. I'll change the hooks out and, and put one size larger. And I'm just gonna work it and bang it through cover and rip it through grass and stuff like that. I'm fishing it on a seven foot four, medium heavy, moderate action rod. It's actually the chatter crank rod from 13 Fishing. Um, it is, I fish it with 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon. Seven three to one gear ratio reel because I if I throw an eight three to one I tend to work it way too fast and I just don't get bit as much so I like to keep it a seven three sometimes a six three to one but I don't typically go that far um, but uh, but yeah that's it's one of those we forget but it's one of the best baits in the fall is a lipless crankbait I kind of think that the chatterbait has put a shadow over lipless crankbaits and just made it to where more people want to fish a chatterbait over a lipless but i'm telling you in the fall switch up to a lipless and you're going to catch more fish let me see if i've forgotten anything before i close up this video because i'm sure i have give me just a minute oh yes i have yes i have yes i have and it's sitting down here on the in my trash pile actually it's not a trash pile it's where i throw all the baits i've been using and uh and retied or tied something different on but a, a buzz bait. 
even this time of the year, if the bass are shallow and active, top water works. If they're really shallow up against the bank like they get in the fall, a buzz bait in the morning and sometimes all day is the way to go. This is a Greenfish Tackle Toad Toter. Um, I've got a, 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 a Magnum Rage Menace on it, and the weight is actually right here. You can see it. Let me see if I can show you. The weight is right here. You actually put the, the plastic all over the weight or all the way over the weight and it makes it easier to skip it under docks and under overhangs and things like that. Um, one of the things I suggest, and I'm going to put, I'm, I'll uh, launch a video here shortly about how to tune a spinner bait or a buzz bait to make it squeak because they don't come squeaky. Uh, there's some tricks and things you do. I actually zip tie this to a fan and have it, the fan wear that bait out. Um, and really really get it to where it squeaks good and this thing has caught some giants and it's not that old I've only had it for a few months, but definitely a buzz bait throw it on a medium heavy moderate action rod like that chatter crank rod I showed you a minute ago seven three to one gear ratio reel throw it up against the bank even throw it onto the bank and slowly reel it back in and As soon as it gets in you know as soon as you get to that point where the it the blade starts to break the break the surface That's how fast you want to reel it You don't want to reel it any faster and just work it back to the boat cover water and you're gonna catch fish I love a buzz bait man. Oh gosh somebody, but anyway, those are the baits for November I'm sure there's a lot more. I know there's a lot more but those are the ones I decided to talk about this month I'll leave a link down in the description to all of those baits and like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing, introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. And more importantly, get out on the water, go ahead and catch some fish, and have a great day.